Okay. So today I get to interview my friend Seidel. <laughs> and I have just loved working with Seidel. So I am so excited for everybody else to see um, what progress she was able to make working with me and how awesome she is. So I love you. <laughs> I love you too. So tell us where you were before uh, before you found me. Oh man, you know, I, I was experiencing a lot of food overwhelm. So I'm gluten sensitive, milk sensitive, like I can eat dairy, but I can't eat, have milk, like straight up milk products. Um, and sugar creates a lot of inflammation. I mean, it does for everybody, but I have psoriasis on my scalp. And so when I have when I have sugar, then it just like inflames and the psoriasis spreads everywhere. Um, and so when we started meeting, I was just really in this place of feeling overwhelmed and extremely limited by my food options. And it was it was like, um, I think the good word would be paralyzed. Mm. I wanted to make other food choices I knew I needed to make other food choices for my body, but I was feeling so much overwhelm that I felt like I couldn't even, I mean, cause there's a million recipes everywhere for gluten-free, milk-free, sugar-free. And I couldn't even get myself to look at stuff, let alone then try to make it because I was feeling so overwhelmed. I didn't love that. Yeah. So, um, what did you believe about yourself or your situation? What did I believe? I believed that good food, healthy food for me would be time consuming and it would take over my life. I believed that uh, I wasn't worth the time mm. that it would take. Um, I believed I couldn't have fun with it. Like I couldn't have fun with food and and I knew that I could, but I just couldn't see like the how. Yeah. Because it just felt like my family loves gluten. They adore dairy and sugar is their best friend. And so it's me by myself. And so, you know, sometimes can create a lot of isolation. Yes. Yeah. When I'm eating something completely different than what they're eating. So what, what made you realize that something needed to change? Because I was going back to gluten. Mm. And I didn't want to go back to gluten. I was going back to sugar and I didn't want to go back to sugar either. So did you feel like, uh, in some ways you felt like you didn't have a choice? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a really great way to put it. I totally felt like I didn't have a choice because I felt stuck. I felt paralyzed. I felt like I couldn't, I didn't have options and it was already hard enough coming up with something to feed my family. And I could kind of make options for myself from that. But, you know, if they had dessert, I wanted to have dessert too. And I was like, I already exhausted all my energy making myself an option from what they were having. I'll just eat the dessert. So did you have any concerns when you decided to start working with me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to hear. <laughs> I was like, okay, because I know you're a vegetarian. 
and I am definitely not. And um, my ancestors are very much meat and potatoes kind of people. And I'm like, I got to have the protein. And so I was like, are, is she going to make me go vegetarian? Because <laughs> I was like, I can't do that. I have a salad. And it's like, there's this comedian. He said, a salad is a promissory note that food is soon to come. He's like, a salad is not a meal. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I kind of have had that feeling, you know, like I just cannot get full on a salad. And um, so I was worried about that, but that you didn't like that never happened. It never happened. And it was fantastic. <laughs> like you really helped me see what was going on emotionally that was holding me back. you know, yeah. which is better than any food choice because mm -hmm. it opens you up to the food choices. Yeah. So how do you feel now? I feel so good. I feel so good. And I, I will say too, because when we started working together, we started doing like, uh, what is it called? The emotion essential emotions. essential emotions yeah essential emotions and i was like i don't have any oils i really don't have any oils like this is not i'm like i'm gonna have to show up with oils that i don't have i don't know how to use oils so like that was another huge thing is that that really helped me so much in the program was I remember one day I was like, I hadn't bought any oils, but I was like, oh my gosh, I have so many oils. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? Like I always had exactly what I needed. Yes. And so interesting how that happens. <laughs> yeah. So fascinating. Yeah. And then I ended up buying some, um, not that that was your intent or goal, I don't think. Um, but it was nice to know, I guess I'll say it this way because I was receiving the emotional support I needed, I felt like I could also then step out and give myself the physical support that I needed. Does that make sense? Yes. And the, it, the oils help support you in the emotional release and in changing um, like your thought patterns and Yes, yeah, they happened. did. And because I was seeing that happening in our sessions, I was like, oh, so I'm doing this emotional support and I'm getting the physical here. And so then I would purchase so that I get more physical and I'd be able to do more emotional work, you know? Yeah. So it was like, and so then I just did this. Yeah. In fact, the other day, because we haven't met for a while, but the other day I was like, feeling something I can't remember. And I was like, I should probably get my essential emotions oils <laughs> or a book out and like go through what I was feeling. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's, that's a good idea. <clears throat> so you said I didn't, um, like I, what my intent wasn't to like encourage you to buy oils, but did you, um, did you feel like you had a better understanding of like why the oils help or how to use them or any of that? Yes. Like how to use them, how they were beneficial for me because prior to us meeting, I was like, oils don't help me at all. And then we met and you kind of explained how I could use them. We used them in the session and I was like, oh, well actually these oils are benefiting me quite a bit. And so while we were working together, I started using them for physical stuff. And I was like, holy cow, that was amazing. That like totally helped. Like I used one time, I, I have uh, painful ovulations, mm. it's called middle schmerz. Pain in the middle is what it means. So very appropriate. Um, and it, it, they have in the past felt like I have a cyst rupturing like that's what my ovulation will feel like which is horrible because it like 
halts everything. Like there's no walking or anything like that. And, um, it was feeling, it's gotten better as I've cleaned up my diet, but, um, I was feeling it come on and I went and I grabbed my past tense and I put it over my ovaries and I was like, Oh, I can't go make dinner now. And like, it was no big deal. That's awesome. Which before it, like it, I would be like, okay, babe, have fun making dinner. Cause I'm out. Yeah. So it made a difference in your life. They, the oils helped make a difference in your life in ways you didn't foresee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And I'd heard people talk about that in their life. And I was like, yeah, my body just doesn't respond to oils when it was really, you have no idea what oils you need and how to use them in a way that's helpful for you. Mm -hmm. Like I would get peppermint for a migraine and I'd put it on my temples or whatever. And what I really needed to do was put it on the base of my neck. Mm. And when I put it on the base of my neck, I was like, whoa, <laughs> like it's gone. Okay. So what has been the result of working with me? Like what's your big win? My big win is I feel emotionally lighter. Mm. And I can make different food choices. And I I feel like, you know, I I found a meal plan that works and I bought it and I've used it and it's amazing and I love it which I couldn't have done two months ago because I was just feeling so overwhelmed. Like my friend has been using this meal plan forever and she's been talking to me about it for a long time. And I was just like, I can get it now. And I feel like I'm capable of doing it. And I made some of the recipes and I'm like, oh my gosh, these are amazing. And that's been really great. And then, you know, understanding and being able to be like, oh, my daughter, you know, and so I've had her use some oils and, it's been helpful for her too. And so that's been, that's been really nice too, but I just feel so much lighter. Um, so what changed about the rest of your life as a result of working with me? I feel like I was able, I feel like I've been able to have more fun. Mm. Oh, you know what I'm just remembering? I'm really remembering this one week that we worked together. My husband and I were going to Costa Rica. My daughter's 13. She's almost 14. So it's not as she's a baby. We were going to be gone for five days. It was not that big of a deal. I mean, for a 13 year old, that should not be that big of a deal. But I just don't ever leave her. And I was having so much anxiety and panic around leaving her. And like, we started working together for food and we worked together for all these other things that didn't have anything to do with food or so I thought, but really opened me to be able to be in a space where I wasn't stressed and hi, when you, I'm stressed out, like I immediately go to all of that food that my body is like, that is painful for me. <laughs> Why do you hate me? You know? And we worked together and I was able to go to Costa Rica for the whole time. And I had zero anxiety about my daughter. And I was just like super chill, which meant that I was able to honor myself better with my food choices. I That's remember, I remember that session. And then I, I think I checked in with you a few days later because I was like, How's it going? <laughs> Are you doing okay? And don't feel like you have to answer me because I know you're on vacation, but yeah. And then, and then our next session, you were like, oh yeah, it was fine. It yeah. Was and it was, it's so great because that like, and I know, I know this, but I, I still couldn't stop myself. Like if I'm having anxiety about my daughter, even leaving my daughter for that amount of time, I will also experience that when we're home and she's at school. 
Mm. Um, so not only was it like capping my ability to have joy without her with me, but it was capping my ability to experience joy with her mm. when we were together. Does that make sense? Yeah. And addressing that really gave me the opportunity to experience joy with and without her in a different, like at a higher level. Yeah. Oh. Which all affects my food because I'm just super emotional with my food. Yeah. So are you, do you feel like you're still worried about um, food or like, is there, a, is there still some, some things that you're like, ah, yeah, I, I, we worked on this a little bit, but I, eh, there's still some things in there or, or do you feel like you made some significant progress? Some where, significant where progress. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, my son, we got him some food at Costco the other day and I forgot to take it he doesn't live with us. And so I forgot to like send it home with him and it was in the fridge and he's like, well, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get it to me in time. He broke his foot so he couldn't drive. Oh. And so I was like, uh, he's like, I just, you should probably just eat it. It expires. And I was like, well, we can get it to you. But then I was hungry and I was like, this are sugar snap peas. And I haven't had sugar snap peas in a hot minute. And I got like this cauliflower dip. So there's no milk in it. It's so yummy. And so I opened it and I was eating these sugar snap peas in this dip. And I was like, Catherine would be so proud of me. <laughs> I'm like eating a vegetable I haven't eaten in a long time. And I know you had talked to me about eating different kinds and not eating the same thing all the time and every day and how it's good for our bodies to have different, different kinds of foods. And I was just like, I'm having a different kind of food and it feels good and it felt fun and it felt light and easy. And I was like, I think I kind of want to go get myself a bag of sugar snap peas. Yeah. I love, I love sugar snap peas. They're delicious. <laughs> they are so delicious. They're so good. You'd be proud. You would have been proud. And I thought oh, you'd... <laughs> I am proud. <laughs> I mean, having kiwi and love. mangoes, pineapple. It's just good. Delicious. Doesn't, is it making your mouth water? <laughs> yes. Yep. I'm, I'm thinking about what's in my fridge, what I could eat after we're done here. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, um, how did your beliefs about yourself change? Hmm, that's a good question. I think, I think one of the things that changed, well, one of the beliefs that I had was that essential oils don't work for me. And I saw that wasn't the case. And that food doesn't have to be like, when I feel heavy emotionally, it's going to make food feel heavy. And when I like address my emotions, then, then food feels a lot lighter mm -hmm. and more possible to, you know, there's more possibilities with it. So does it still feel as hard as it used to? No, not even close. Do you have a changed perspective on whether or not you're worth the effort yes big time and it's been really okay so okay so i didn't even realize this until just now um but i i communicated a couple of things to my husband recently and i because i was able to communicate them so clearly he was like and he didn't say it like this, but his, it was his actions that showed it. He was like, what can we make you? What food can you have? What's going to be the most supportive to your body? So I made these brownies recently. They are 
sugar-free, gluten-free, milk-free. They're delicious. Unless you ask my mother-in-law who's, you know, hopped up on sugar. She's like, <laughs> she snuck one. And I was like, uh, did you have a brownie? She's like, there's something wrong with those. <laughs> and I was like, I just laughed. <laughs> I was like, I made them with dates. And she's like, that's what's wrong. <laughs> anyway um it's it's uh, true that if you're eating sugar regularly if you eat stuff that is lower in sugar or has natural sugar it tastes differently yes and it has dates and maple syrup and so it doesn't kind of taste like you know granulated sugar yeah anyway um yeah we just like I came home with all this stuff from the grocery store to make these and and I had most of the stuff, but but he was so helpful to in making them and in making the other stuff that had to be made at the same time so that I could make the brownies. And I was just like, this is awesome. Whereas before it was me doing it alone. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And now it's like, not only am I worth the time, but I can actually have support in making the food that is best for my body. Mm. I love that. Wow. I didn't even realize that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It feels like I don't have to buy shit. it. By, yeah. I don't have to do it by myself. Yeah. I might eat it by myself. And frankly, the brownies, I'm fine with that because they're, they're so <laughs> good. All of them. <laughs> yeah, I eat all of them by myself. <laughs> less, uh, less isolating. Less, yeah, less yes, because he, yeah, because he's doing it with me. Yeah. Even just making it with me, you know. Mm, I like that. So if somebody was considering working with me, but they were on the fence. What would you tell them? Jump off the fence, lady. <laughs> I'd be like, oh my gosh, this is what I would say. I would say, Catherine is going to love you through it. I think one of the things I'm going to cry. One of the things that was so helpful to me throughout the program is that you stood next to me and you would hold my hand while I was walking through something. And I remember one time just feeling really stubborn and not wanting to like make a change. Do you remember this session? And you were crying and I was just like, <sighs> like a toddler, you know, throwing a little fit and you were crying and I was like, you're sad. And you're like, yeah, I'm sad. You're making this, you know, that you're making this decision or whatever, whatever it was you said. Not, and it wasn't in a manipulative way. You were just like truly sad. And I was like, oh, she like really cares about me. And that in that moment, like it totally softened my heart. And I could step outside that stubbornness for just a minute and see what was really going on underneath it. And then you worked me through the rest of the, the session. I was able to completely step out of it, mm -hmm. but it was that compassion that you had for me. And so I would say, if you're sitting on the fence, know that you will just be loved through every step of the program and through every step of the process. And they, you know, you, you're gonna, you'll have your hand held and sometimes there isn't anything more valuable than that we did a lot of crying together <laughs> we did do a lot of crying together it was good it was good dears is there anything else you want to share i love you and i think you're really amazing thank you and i appreciate your patience <laughs> Because sometimes I was stubborn. We all have our moments of stubbornness. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, Fidel, can you tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do and where people can find you? 
Yes, um, I am a vocal intuitive and light field astrologer, so I help women connect to the power and frequency of their sound so that they can have the impact on their audience that they're desiring. And that's the audience of their followers or their significant others or their children or their friends, because our sound impacts all of those people. Um, and so we, you know, we take a look at their natal charts and take a listen to their voice and help people get really in alignment with their sound. Um, you can find me at www.soulsound.co or join my Facebook group, which we have a lot of fun in. Yes. Soul Sound with Seidel Schultz. We do fun things. We're pulling, it's the first of the month. So we pull cards at the first of the month and. It's my favorite time of the month. Yeah. And I have, um, I have done mostly a lot of free stuff with you, but mm -hmm. I have found so much value in what you do. And, um, especially when I apply it to my life, <laughs> <What? laughs> but it, one in particular workshop that you did that I, I still think about regularly and, um, yeah, um, change like what my, um, what I think about what, uh, what message I want to send with my voice. And it, and I am always amazed at how it changes the quality and the sound of my voice when I, when I think through those things that I learned from you. So thank you. Oh my gosh. I love that. That just made my day. Thank you. Hey, well, thank you, Seidel. It's so good to uh, talk with you again. And thank you so much for doing this little case study interview. And hopefully we will see each other, continue to see each other often. <laughs> uh, <duh. laughs> Thanks, Catherine. Love you. Love you too.